Hello there, Sagittarius. Even though you might be, you know, in another country, in another place, the energy was very familiar and it just didn't feel adventurous anymore. And then for others of you who have, you know, um, succumbed to the lifestyle where we're keeping up, where it's, you know, it's like work and then home, work and then home. And you're just like, is this what I want out of life? Is this all there is? Am I truly happy or am I just, you know, a cog in the machine and the wheels keep turning? Life goes on without me. So I feel like many of you were in this dilemma where you're just like, where's the sense of adventure? Is this all there is to life? What's next? How can I break myself out of this rut? Am I really happy here? And I honestly feel some of you, you feel emotionally fulfilled where you're at. So like, you know, work might be going really well. I don't see financial losses here. Family as well, you know, they, they might be around, they might be supportive. So I feel like the, the security brings about emotional stability but your soul is yearning for a little bit more your soul is yearning for more expansion more opportunities more out of life more freedom and you know freedom and security doesn't have to um, be mutually exclusive they can coexist so it's just a matter of, you know, trying to figure out how to blend the two in a harmonious way so that you're not making drastic decisions to kind of overturn your entire lifestyle just because you want this really deep-rooted sense of security or just because you want this really deep-rooted sense of um, expansion. Um, what I'm feeling when I was shuffling out this spread, and I'm going to go over the rest of the cards in just a little bit, but um, I want to get this out before I forget. Um, I feel like many of you have received some news, and uh, the news came far away, okay? So, like, it could be from a relative who's really far from you overseas, in another state, in another country. Um, geographically, there is a distance <clears throat> between you and this correspondence or the, the, the writer or whoever you're corresponding with. And um, I feel like the information given is kind of vague. You know, it's like um, one paragraph and it's kind of vague. So you're just like, I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what their intentions are. And so you're trying to read between the lines, okay? And my advice for you is you don't need to read between the lines. Time will reveal their intentions. And I feel like they don't want to reveal too much because they don't want you to say no. They don't want you to say, and you know, Sagittarius, you guys are really, really good at um, drawing clear boundaries. You know, if you don't like something, you're going to be very blunt about it. And you're just like, no, that's not my cup of tea. So I'm going to decline right now. And I feel like that's what they're afraid of. Like they know you. So they're, they're, they're trying to be very vague and, um, you know, just to kind of like test the waters with you. And it is really annoying, right? Like when you're dealing with people like that, um, I don't feel they have any bad intentions. I don't feel like, you know, they're purposely trying to be evasive. I feel like they're just trying to test the waters with you. And then I feel like for others of you, I see like an envelope. And whenever I see envelopes, I usually think of it as, you know, some type of official communication, like um, from, a, from an attorney, like uh, getting served papers. But I don't see any legal issue showing up in the spread. So I feel like it's official letters, okay? Like a job offer. Do you want to come and work with us? So I feel like some really big official, like envelopes, so big official, you know, uh, big decisions that are in that envelope. So big life cho choices or big decisions that you're going to have to make regarding work, regarding finances, regarding your career, and also inevitably, you know, career and also your life path. So I feel like that's what's happening here. Um, I'm seeing you, some of you are keeping, like, you might be um, going through some type of an interview process. So you might have like a job offer 
and you're interviewing right when we're starting the month of June and you're trying to keep very quiet about it and deep down Sagittarius I feel like many of you are very deeply superstitious you will never admit it to people but you know you're watching this but I feel like you're you're deeply superstitious and you feel like, oh, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to tell too many people. I don't want to, you know, get my hopes up in case I don't get the job. But I feel like it's probably a good idea for you to go through the interview. Um, let yourself be divinely guided. Okay, so that means listen to your intuition. Don't let other people, naysayers and, you know, whatever like you're 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 not telling people for a reason right because you don't want them to talk you out of it but you also you know when we feel like something is right we feel it we feel it at our core and someone can tell you you know you're wrong you're wrong or it's not right for you or don't do that but they're not you they're not in your shoes and they're not living your experience so what they say don't have any bearing so what you should do is, you know, not listen to anybody else and really rely on your intuition. What is your heart telling you? What is your intuition telling you? Rely on this. Because with Sagittarius people, you have this internal moral compass and you have this internal compass, period. And you know what you need to do for yourself okay so I feel like you're hoping and praying for some type of divine guidance or divine answers but the problem here is that you already know it you already know what you need to do and you're moving on from something that was potentially very confusing you're moving forward you're not looking back and you're moving forward with a lot of support with a lot of um, positive reception and you're moving to this where it's very stable it's very solid it's something possibly brand new new location and it's promising to be very very lucrative okay so financially and I also feel emotionally the only drawback I feel is some of you might be far away from family the people that you're used to the things that you know the sense of familiarity so once again if the familiar is something that you feel like uh, it's too stifling I want to break out of it and then you break out of it you're gonna find yourself missing that familiar so in life you know we kind of have to always weigh out the options right and uh, I know with you guys uh, it's 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 always like the 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 issue has always been um, it's like stability versus freedom and you feel like they're opposite ends of the spectrum and they don't have to be stability having a good job making money taking care of yourself being proud of the fact that you're making money and you're taking care of yourself so on the one hand you're very stable and you're also very independent you're able to take care of yourself that to me is a good way for you to incorporate that energy stability versus freedom you're financially independent so you are free and then you're also you know making enough money where you don't have to worry about day-to-day -day operations you don't have to worry about you know uh, you don't have to be in that financial lack so that is stability and then trying to find situations where you can kind of um, find that stability within that freedom or even having the financial stability so that you can have the freedom that you're looking for being able to travel you know ha taking vacation taking time off when you're sick without having to you know um, see a decrease in your paycheck so we have to kind of re wire our brain to really think about what exactly that means you know when when we're talking about stability what exactly does it mean it doesn't need to hinder your freedom it doesn't need to hinder your sense of expansion okay so that's what I'm, I'm feeling here some of you I feel like you're in a situation where you're thinking about should I 
pursue higher education. You might have gotten some acceptance letters. Um, and you're thinking like, it, should I start working? You might have a job offer and you might also have um, schooling, you know, so you might have like two offers for additional education or for work and you're deciding between the two. And you might feel like education is stifling. It's like, I'm not going to be financially independent, but it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, so we kind of need to creatively uh, draw, it's like walk that fine line in between and not err too much on one side or the other, or even think of the fact that freedom and stability don't have to be opposite ends of the spectrum where having one excludes the other. So it doesn't need to work that way. Okay, so we're going to move on. Um, I feel like envelopes, okay, official communication. I feel like some of you are, are superstitious and you're not you don't want to tell people about what you're doing. You don't want people to um, say bad things about your plans or talk you out of it or give you reasons to doubt your decision or even you don't want to jinx it. And then I also feel like you're dealing with people who have expectations of you, unrealistic expectations of you. And for example, you know, you, you have people that tell you, family members they're like oh you need to come live with me and take care of this and in the meantime you're trying to you know finish school in another state or in another country or you're in another country and then some people are just like I need your help and it's like what do you do do you curb your plans stall your plans delay your plans for the other person I feel as well some of you are getting a communication that's really heartwarming and there are two kinds somebody is telling you somebody is revealing to you I need you like I, I can't live without you I really really need you and I have here an, uh, a water sign so this is a Sag uh, I'm sorry Scorpio cancer uh, Pisces okay the the energy of this person though I don't feel like it's necessarily a water sign I feel like it's somebody that's finally softening up and revealing to you I need you and you know it's really flattering when somebody tells us you know I care about you I need you and I need you because I care about you or I need you because I love you and then there's the other hidden motives as well I need you I can't do it on my own I'm not Com comfortable or competent or capable of doing it on my own so I need you so this is a space of entrapment and I feel like it's it's two def uh, separate scenarios for many of you somebody's telling you and they're kind of uh, testing the waters with you like I need you I can't take care of, of myself and I feel like it might be an earth sign that you're dealing with so Taurus Virgo Capricorn possibly a family member okay so like a spouse <clears throat> a child um, somebody that somebody that has not always been forthcoming and honest with you that's what I'm feeling it's like they're testing the waters with you um, and I feel as if all of this information came came up you know recently within I would say like the past seven days uh, within that time frame, that uh, new uh, full moon time frame in Sagittarius. And on the one hand, there were some messages where it's like, it's really refreshing because the other person is opening up to you emotionally. And they're like, I love you and I need you. And then there's this other one where it's like, I need you because I can't do it on my own. So those are really different messages and make sure you know which ones you're getting, okay? You should not be flattered because of this. You should be flattered because of the, the first scenario. And this seems to me like there are a lot of strings attached. So if, if you're presented with this scenario, you need to really ask yourself, this is what's really going to hinder your freedom of movement and your freedom overall and your ability to move on to better and bigger things. Okay, so that's something you really need to kind of um, 
look at skeptically because it's not flattering when somebody is like it's not as attractive right like I, I can't do it on my own I need you so you need to stay here you need to be responsible to me you don't need to be responsible to anybody except yourself and then the second instance it's like something you've been hoping for and praying for and possibly there might have be uh, there might have been excuse me I can't speak English there might have been a uh, stoppage in communication between you and this water sign so set uh, <clears throat> I keep saying Sagittarius so there there might have been stall communication between you and this person and then all of a sudden they're like I really need you I really love you I can't live without you and I feel like for many of you there was stall communication you've already moved on so I feel like this is a proclamation that came a little bit too belatedly like it's it's you were hoping and praying and wanting it for a really long time you've already released the expectations that you had as a result the full moon happened to reveal to you that you're no longer emotionally bound to it and it's no longer having it's the same effect on you you've already mourned the loss of that situation that person and now they're giving you that you know I, I love you and I need you and you're not communicating you're not responding you're already moving on working on your career focusing on bigger things and um, not to belittle this person or the relationship but it seems like more in alignment with your life path this is um fire energy it deals with momentum prog progress being in the public limelight um, it's like allowing your energy to kind of exp expand outwards in the public sphere connecting with people in a more lighthearted way because whatever is here it's all very heavy and it's like emotionally demanding it's possibly emotionally manipulate lading and it's possibly very exhausting so whatever you were dealing with the person the people the relationships the work whatever it was it's just you know look at it it's very dark and gloomy and it's like you did it because the sense of accomplishment that you got was that I'm able to take care of people and you gave and gave and gave and gave and you took care of people and I feel like you got that sense of accomplishment from it and it served its purpose but the rest of it was just you're leeching a lot of energies and people were not really appreciative and this is very emotionally heavy and so you're trying to move on here and you need to move on because this is already done and over with the full moon reveals to us and it's shining its light on this situation this is toxic this is not healthy and emotionally it's kept you very very stuck and the other person is like drawing tugging at your heartstrings wanting to make you stay and you've got other things coming up for you on the horizon so this is a new opportunity new work possibly for many of you and I feel new relationships as well possibly with an earth sign so um, possibly with an earth sign possibly as well I feel like with somebody brand new okay uh, with the aces they're always new ventures and new things and you might have been in a you know marriage type of a relationship where things were built up over the years where there are kids and grand um, they're, they're saying like in-laws grandparents people living under one roof and it, it might have been that was like the the uh, the reason why you couldn't leave because it's complicated right things are always complicated and so you're missing it but you need to move on so let me see what this uh, brings for you So what we have here the wheel of fortune in the reverse so you got to push a little bit harder and this is basically saying 
the opportunity is there. You need to meet it halfway. You can't expect it to fall on your lap. You still need to do your manifestations. You still need to give it your all. You still need to kind of like push along that last leg of the journey. So for example, if I mentioned earlier, letters are coming in, so you need to respond, right? So that's, it's kind of like that. The energy is there. What are you doing with it? And then at the same time, the same person might be reaching out to you. So you need to kind of turn your back. You you can't you you can't like bring the the past into the future when you're trying to pursue something else. Does that make sense? So don't let this kind of like get pulled into the future while you're trying to go after this new thing. You have to sever things. So there's still some preliminary legwork that you still need to do. There's still as well some loose ends that you need to tie up. So we have here the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is all about the fantasy versus the reality. The fantasy in the Seven of Cups is that everything's going to, you know, go swimmingly well. And that is the nature of the Sagittarius person. You see the best in situations. You hope for the best. And you kind of jump in and ask questions later. So they're really asking you, you know, don't be starry-eyed. Don't come in there with your uh, blinders on. You need to look at things from a different perspective. And you also, another thing I want to be you to be careful about is, um, for example, if you're feeling very, very trapped and very stuck and the new opportunity presents itself, and you're just like, it's new, I'm just going to go for it because it's new. You need to be very careful because in the process of trying to get out of your rut, you might be headed for something that might not be in its best in your best interest. So sever things first before you move on to the new thing, okay? Otherwise, we have the situation here where we're still missing the past. So if you're you have a tendency to run away from situations when things get too rough, and new opportunities present itself and you're like, I'm going to go for it. I feel like lessons are repeating, okay? So let me just see what you need to know about your love life, okay? I feel like this is so heavy. It's so emotional. Can't even shuffle. So what is in store for Sagittarius for love relationships? What do the Sagittarius people need to know for the month of June 2018? Yeah, you have some new energies in. So the past might be a water sign. Sagittarius. <laughs> I keep saying Sagittarius. Sagittarius, it could be a Sagittarius even. Um, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, okay? This is somebody that is uh, very unhappy or dissatisfied and they could potentially be a little bit depressed. I'm also seeing in this devil, Capricorn. Capricorn, Pisces as well. Um, a little bit of uh, depression that they're dealing with. And this is somebody that, you know, once again, it's like needing to consult somebody needing to to consult like a specialist a mental health specialist or even a um, psychiatrist or seeing somebody to alleviate this somber mood this depression or something like health wise with them and um if you yourself were dealing with some health issues i feel like a partner might have been dealing with some health issues you're dealing with some health issues there's going to be a clearing up where the two of you can come back together Okay, so that's only for those who are dealing with health issues. Otherwise, I feel like you're heading off into a brand new situation here. And I have communication that's coming through. And with the strength card, it's sort of like, take the risk, you know, reach out, meet it halfway. Don't take it for granted. And what we do have as well, possibly another uh, fire sign. So Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, or at least somebody who's, uh, whose energy is very similar to you. They want the same things. They want expansion. And I feel for many of you, this is a situation where you're going to have to start manifesting. The person might not be in the picture just yet. And they're trying to, you know, they're trying to come in. So you, you have to start manifesting. You have to sever the past. 
so that you can begin again. So this is what's really keeping you stuck and preventing your you from being able to expand outward and to manifest the right people to come into your life. It's because you're stuck here. And so you need to sever those ties in order to move forward, okay? I hope the reading has been helpful for you, Sagittarius. Um, I feel like the full moon, it was not easy to deal with. The energy was really, really tense from my end, at least. And um, it was very, very intense. I mean, for the, the past, like, um, 10 days, I just could not do, the, do tarot readings. It, it just didn't come in, so I had to use other ways to channel. So I don't know what you guys were dealing with, but I feel like it was very emotionally focused wasn't easy so I hope that you know you've come out with a lot more clarity as to what you need to do and I also feel like with this communication stuff there's new things on the horizon new jobs new opportunities new travel opportunities for you and um, go for it okay take that chance take the risk and um, you you kind of need to start living for yourself Sagittarius and you know you you can't be the caretaker anymore you need to start living for yourself okay i wish you all the best take care and um i'll see you maybe in about two weeks time i'm not sure if i can do like a, a quick love reading if i have time okay so either way take care of yourself bye bye